Welcome to Coast Connection. Tonight we're going to be talking about Black History Month. Every February is declared Black History Month in Canada and most provinces also do a separate declaration. And tonight we have the pleasure of having a discussion with Shalima Gant, who's the president of the Nanaimo African Heritage Society. Welcome, Shalima. Thank you. Yeah, well, this is always a busy time for you, isn't it, in February? Pretty much, I'm very kind of worn out here, running around, doing everything, trying to get it all together. Yeah. yeah. But you, you have a lot of stuff that, that involves the community, that you know, forces them to come in and learn something about black history. Well, we try to. Uh, this year, I'm kind of stepping it up a bit by um, hosting talent. It, um, we're having a variety show, and it's going to be all young, talented kids that are going to perform. So, you know, we're trying to keep up with the trends, keep up with now what's happening. And I think, you know, the young generation needs to get more into what's happening with black history. Yeah. You know, think, uh, when did black history start? Do you, do you remember? Like, I it's... think it was uh, 1926. Um, was it 1926 so, with oh, Carter oh, G. Wilson, yes, uh, yeah. educator, yeah. professor? Yeah, because he, he started it to because he thought it was important that not, not just black people, but the society at large learn something. But uh, in the early days, it was only a week. Right. And, uh, and it's grown now to, uh, you to know, a to a month. whole month. Yeah. yeah, but it gets shorter all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always February. It's always it's February. The shortest month we of the year. We got Valentine's Day and so forth and yeah. so on, yeah. <laughs> um, but but it, it's, uh, I, I was really keen on talking about uh, black history and if I, uh, and I mean, some of these things I know you know, but I'm hoping that people in the audience will, will you know, find something new. And uh, the, first, the first recorded black person in Canada was uh, Matthew da Costa. And, and that was in the 1600s. Wow. Um, and so he, he came, uh, he, was, um, he was from Africa, mm -hmm. uh, died in Quebec City. Uh, you know, when, when he did, because he stayed in Canada for many years. He was a translator for uh, Ch uh, Champlain uh, when he came to, to Canada from France. And he did translation for them in French and for Dutch explorers. Wow. And he also knew the language of the Mi'kmaq Indians on the wow. East Coast. So wow. uh, I always had a suspicion that he was here for before 1600 when they spotted him but uh, as a translator anyhow um i wanted to get into your your opinion of why you think it's important to celebrate aspects of black history month well for me i just it's given me strength and positive to know that what a contribution that black people paid in this world i think a lot of it is still new the information is just coming forward. There's so much information in the hidden. I mean, look at the hidden figures. Yeah. How incredible to hear that we had black women that actually was there in Nassau to put them in space. How wonderful. And yet we, we knew nothing about that. The woman is 92 years old right now, Catherine. Yeah. So all of that information that's coming forward just tells me, regardless of what or how things came about with slavery or anything, People did rise above that. They did contribute to our land and our world, our countries. So I think it's important that that information come forward. It makes everybody feel inclusive. It makes the young people feel they don't have anything to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. They've had pioneers that contributed. And, and there's been some uh, important, important inventions and uh, scientific advancements that, that blacks have been at the forefront of. And they, they tend to get lost, and, I, and, and I, I'm not sure I understand why, you know, like, uh, because it makes you feel like you're an invisible person in this society, and yet you're the most visible of the society. Yeah, it is, it's, <laughs> it's a hard time. Black history is one of those things that, oh, I look at the history and I look at all the contribution, but it's a little sad because you know that these stories hasn't been told. Therefore, you have races of people that continue to migrate and not realize that um, 
there were other people that paid these prices too and that were there creating along, alongside. I think we get lost into the fact that there was slavery and what that was all about and that people overcome that kind of a thing and just became incredible folks. And a lot of them learn how to do things like anybody else who's contributed to science and uh, the things that it takes. I mean, look at the man who created plasma. Yes. You know, little things like the stoplight, all these things that we take for granted. Who yeah. was the people that invented those things? Yeah, because this was the, uh, you're right, I was thinking about the blood banks because it was, it was his, it was an interesting story about him because he was an American and, uh, but in the United States, he could only go so far. They, they wouldn't allow him to do research. So he ended up going to McGill University in, in um, Montreal is where he was able to, you know, work as a scientist and do wow. his invention. So that was kind of fortunate because it was the kind of thing where every time the Red Cross calls for people to give blood, it was his, you know, uh, work that got the ball rolling. And it was kind of sad. I thought I heard a mixed story about the fact that when he died, he needed a transfusion and the hospital wouldn't give it to him. But I'm not sure, you know, they have all kind of fork lores that goes along with well, all no, this thing. Was, that, that was, was that true? He, he was in a car accident. Oh, Lord. He was in a car accident. Mm -hmm. he, he was back in the United States and he, he was in a car accident. Wow. And he needed a blood transfusion. He needed blood. And of course, the first hospital he took him to didn't accept colored people. And so oh. by the time they got him to a, a colored hospital, yeah. it was too late. He, he died from loss of blood. Yeah, interesting. I mean that, but but apart from sad. the, the sadness of Black History yeah. Month on that aspect, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to. A lot of that. <laughs> I wanted to talk about um, to give people a sense of what how Canada got to recognize uh, Black History Month. Now, and I know you know of Jean Augustine. Right. She was a we member of Parliament. Yes. And uh, and I mention her because she was the the parliamentarian that spearheaded um, the movement to have the Canadian government recognize February as Black History Month. Right. And I think that that's kind of cool. Yeah. I, I think she got her picture on a stamp now. Yeah, that's cool. She's still traveling. She's still doing uh, engagements. Uh, we would like to host her here in Nanaimo. As a matter of fact, I, I met a, a person who just came back from Toronto and he was hosted at one of her parties and he said oh i'll give her a call for you i was like okay yeah. cool we can have her out here and, and and be one of our keynote speakers for black history one of these years yeah yeah we seem to be at the end of the uh, the trail it seems like you know nanaimo getting people here but but i think you're right it's because it, if you invite somebody um you know, you got to pay to bring them. I oh, mean, yeah, and, for and, sure. and you got to fly them and uh, yeah, put them up in a hotel. Oh, and so, so it's not something yeah. that can be done cheaply. Um, uh, you know, as, as an example, like, I don't know how many people remember uh, Canada's uh, sprinter, Harry Jerome. And um, now, right now in Toronto, they're preparing and gearing up for the Harry Jerome Awards. Why? It's wow. been over 30 years that they've held this event. They've raised, oh, I forget, uh, about two, three million dollars of scholarships they've given out to students, and not just in track and field, but in, in any aspect of education, mm -hmm. they give them scholarships. And all because of a British Columbia sprinter who, you know, died young. Uh, he'd be, what, 77 now if wow. he was alive, but yeah. he died at 42. Wow. And, uh, and that's that's an important thing because in Toronto we, he's more famous almost than he is in British in Columbia British now. Columbia. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I find that uh, kind of interesting. But aren't, oh, sorry, we, aren't we celebrating 160 years of uh, blacks coming to the shore? Well, I don't know if they're celebrating it, but I certainly <laughs> hope so. <laughs> I, I certainly hope so because because uh, most people don't put it together. You know, like uh, it was on April the 25th when a group of blacks came to uh, Esquimalt Harbor aboard the steamship, uh, you know, the Commodore. Right. And uh, they came aboard, and it's, it'll be 160 years ago that they arrived in Amazing. Esquimalt in British Columbia. And that was sort of the first um, uh, settlement of, of yeah. black people. 
uh, apart from James Douglas, who was here as the governor, yeah. you know, like uh, he, he was, because he was of mixed parentage, right. you know, he was, had Just one like white parent, parent, one black parent. Yeah. So, um, but he was the governor and he was the one who encouraged them to immigrate, if you like, or right. come to, to British Columbia. Yeah, there's all kinds of stories. There was a play, yeah. I remember seeing a play about it one time, and it was that these group of people from San Francisco was free blacks mm -hmm. uh, and, and wanting to get away from, the, they wanted to enslave them again. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Sir so James Douglas, the queen, got in touch with Sir so James Douglas and said, hey, we need to take over this territory. This is, this is for, for grabs. And, you know, all those coal miners are, what are they, what are they looking for at the time? They were coming up and uh, yeah. the gold miners or something coming yeah, up and, and she wanted to make sure that we keep this territory. Yeah. So then all these San Francisco blacks came up to that said, said he found the, a letter on his desk oh, we got all these black people that wanted to come up here a long time yeah. ago. Well, hey, we better get them up here. Yeah, because he, he, he went down, I think, for a visit. Oh, okay. And then came back up. Uh, and uh, then Mifflin Gibbs, who was one of the primary movers, uh, John Sullivan Dees, who was another one. And a lot of people may remember the Dees Tunnel, which had a transformation. Its name got shifted and changed to... Uh, the Massey Tunnel. I don't, I don't know how that happened. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, but anyhow. Uh, so it was uh, the Dees Tunnel at yeah, first. Yeah, because okay. Dees was the, the largest independent salmon canner in the province. And, wow. you know, and you know, fishing has always been very big in, in, uh, in BC. Yeah. So he, he was, uh, his cannery, in fact, uh, I must say the federal government has been very good because they, they have declared his site uh, um, around the Dees Slough there. Um, as a heritage site, his, oh. his home and that is, is preserved as a heritage Whoa, site. Oh, that's a new but, information. But he, he left, um, he was being threatened, so he moved his family to Portland and then uh, he eventually left for Portland because his life was being threatened and, yeah. and, and financing got cut off from his bank. You know, the banks yeah. stopped loaning him money to expand his business and so he, he disappeared and went south. But I mean, it was, but I don't think when people f were driving through what was called the Dees Tunnel, but uh, I should tell you, I, I've, I've asked the government to, if they're going to build a new bridge, they better name it after Dees and leave the Massey Tunnel <laughs> after Massey. <laughs> Not that, to was be. A, that was a really interesting time because you had the riflemen, you had all these people that came up and contributed to our land. I mean, I don't. I don't think people really get it that it was a territory. It yeah. wasn't Nanaimo the way it is today. It no. was a territory. So these people came up, and I know for me, I heard a lot about the Underground Railroad, and that's cool. You know, thank God for people were able to help these folks that needed to yeah. escape this hardship. But, um, but these people contributed. They were yeah. pioneers. They helped to build the land that we live on. And for me, when I started hearing that history. That was the one thing that made me feel really Canadian and made me feel part of where I was living, where I'm living, because uh, I heard about all these pioneers that came up and did their thing. And I guess they were coming up at the same time of the gold rush. How did that yeah. work? Well, you, you, you said that right, because you see the things, the people who came up out of California weren't slaves. They, you know, they, they weren't ex-slaves. They were free people, were free people who came up here and, um, which was slightly different than, for instance, like my ancestors came out of Virginia, escaped slavery and moved into Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, so unlike the pioneers who came to British Columbia, you, know, right. so you mentioned the Underground Railroad. That's right. that's how my my ancestors on one side yeah. of my ancestors came into Canada. Well, at least you know that. I don't know that one. But. Yeah, well, the, the, the other side came in That's through great. into Nova Scotia. Yeah. You, you, you've, you've seen oh, yeah. the, the Book of Negroes? Yes. You see, well, yeah. there is actually a Book of Negroes that was put together by the British government okay. when they were bringing blacks out of the United States. Then they, they created the book. They you got your name and it said, you know, how, your age and your sex and your, um, you know, roughly your your um, color, dark, light, you know, like, and they, they height and stuff. And so the, the Book of Negroes was what they 
you know, created. So that's where that came from, yeah. the Book of Negroes. So okay. that's, uh, yeah, so Dan, Dan, not Dan Hill. Uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, I forget his name, his son. His, I'm talking about, it come to us I'm though, talking yeah. about his father, Dan yeah. Hill, who was a very well, big. Well, it's Hill. Yeah. Um, and, oh, just can't think of it right now. And, and yeah. he, he uh, his book was based on the yeah. Book of Negroes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, interesting stuff. I met him in Vancouver. You think I, I, I asked him to marry me. You think I remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I take it it didn't work out. No, no. I oh, just okay. walked up to him and yeah. said that I thought you should but, marry me. But, but anyway. <laughs> but I was thinking about there, there were also, there were, there were some coal miners and things up here in, in Nanaimo and further north up island that wow. came into this area and worked as coal mines. Well, we had our first teacher uh, from that pio those pioneer people that came up, the Stark family. Yes. We had the Emily Stark was one of our uh, first educators, yep. um, black, had a farm right there on Wesley Street. And we had Louis Stark, who owned land down in Chase River. And his uh, mother, uh, or his wife, was Sylvia, and she lived over on Salt Spring. And uh, what did you have, the Alexandras? My God, how, how much people do the Alexandra have produced? Yeah. Do they own this world? You know, do they own Canada now? It's just amazing, uh, these people coming up. As a matter of fact, I just uh, had to go to, sadly, a memorial of a uh, wonderful local musician, uh, Frank Alexandra. So he was part of the Alexandra family. Uh. And he had contributed to music here for a long time. So, you know, black history is just one of those really interesting things that uh, one of the teachers here, uh, Mel Blackman, gave me a book mm -hmm. of the black BC pioneers. Have you, you've seen that book? Yes, yeah, yeah. And so when I started seeing all this, the riflemen, the riflemen, what? We didn't have an army. We had 100 soldiers in Victoria. And they did what? Well, it was it, they were they were there to protect the, uh, the the territory because you see that there was the navy had had military people, but they weren't that wasn't going to be their job, and so the black community that arrived in in uh, Esquimalt created the African Rifles. They they paid for their own uniforms, they paid for their own equipment, and they were encouraged by James. Douglas, you know, to, to be a part of that. And did um, he promise them land or something of that uh, nature? I, that I don't know. I, something I, there, been there whispered may, about was, that, um, yeah. But I know that uh, it was, as long as he was the governor, they were prominent in any sort of public uh, events, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, ceremonies and things. They'd be all decked out and that. And, uh, but as soon as the, uh, Douglas was gone and a new governor was appointed, uh, it was a white governor, he, he didn't want anything to do with the African rifles. He didn't want them participating in any, you know, events and stuff. So he, he, you know, it eventually caused the disbanding of the, the, the group because they didn't have anything to do after that. And so what happened was, I think in that book, that there were merchants, lots of uh, Victorian merchants, mm -hmm. and um, Mifflin Wistar Gibb, he was a lawyer. Yes. So... Tell me about the Yale Conference. What's that about? Well, that, that was when uh, British Columbia was um, making um, discussion about becoming part of Canada, becoming another province within the, the Confederation. So we wasn't even a province at that time. No, no. We were still a territory. And uh, so, and, uh, and Mifflin, Mifflin Gibbs was, was the key in that. He, he was at that convention representing, you know, the population. He also became a prominent in his a role he played in the Victoria, uh, the, uh, the city of Victoria. He was a member of the city council, mm. and he was um, uh, the, the treasurer and uh, produced a balanced budget, which was, I don't yes, know how often I that heard about happens. That. Yeah, <laughs> also, yeah. but the, the, he always gets binned, but he, he, um, he eventually returned to the United States. Um, he became, um, he became a, 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 what do you call it, um, uh, for in Madagascar for the American government uh, and uh, escapes my mind it's terrible um, but anyhow he, he went there and there's a high school in Little Rock Arkansas named after him and a, and a bank you know like I mean he was he was quite prominent but there were there were a lot of the people who came up from California at that time um, him and his partner had a, uh, a store 
that supplied miners and the, the gold diggers right. um, and were challenging and rivaling the Hudson's Bay Company, which was very big, you know, in, in this part of the world at right. that time. Yeah, it was. I don't know. Um, it's amazing history. Uh, I, I find myself sometimes when I'm speaking about it or talking to people, like it's really hard to believe. It's not in our history books. The kids go to school, they don't learn anything about it. Um, I think it's important, you ask me what black history means to keep it, keep it going. I, I just think that it's, it's very, very important that all of the people that are contributed to this land and help to make this prospered land be realized. And I think for the kids going to school, they need to know more about the contribution and to be proud of what it took to get them to be able to walk into doors today and not have to think about it, right? Yeah, I, I, I would go one step further. I think it's it, the adults have to, to know too. Uh, uh, you know, like, I mean, it's, it's okay. I mean, I know the kids will grow up to be adults, but yeah. I'm just saying that, you know, it's, it's because, see, this is, this is one of the problems that, that f I think fuels racism is that you know, people have an opinion and an attitude about a group of people that they don't think contributed to, to anything um, uh, you know, positive in the society that we live in. They're, they're always takers yeah. and you know, uh, not givers yeah. and you know, I'm parting. And uh, uh, you know, I, I went to, um, when I went to school at UBC, it's interesting that the, the, the law school at the University of British Columbia has a motto and it's fiat justitia ruat column. And Very it's nice. an interesting mm -hmm. phrase, and I'll, I'll tell you what it is in a minute, but that phrase was uttered by a judge in England when he freed a black slave that a, a, a white man was trying to bring a sl black slave into England and they went to court. And uh, he said that, so the judge said, if um, he, any, any man that comes into England shall be free and breathe free air. And he quoted the fiat justitia ruat column. And it, what that means is, let justice be done though the heavens may fall. And what that did, it, it freed every slave in England, which were hundreds, and it really threw a crimp into the economy of the country because now they had to pay these people if they wanted to have them provide the services that they've been providing for room and board, for free. you see. Yeah, and and yeah. so they couldn't disappear and go out on their own. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so that was an interesting thing. I, I've always liked that, that phrase anyhow. That's amazing. Let justice be yeah. done though the heavens may fall. I think that's... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, important that that judge made that decision and and then of course in 1833 Britain declared slavery illegal in in the world and started to send its British men of war all over the place hey, but but um, uh, let me think we're, we're gonna be coming close to the end of, of the time we have together and I wanted you to tell me a little bit more about the activities you've got planned for Black History Month well, we had to change it up a bit, uh, you know, due to our funding coming in a bit late for us. We always have a number of events that goes on through Black History Month. We will have the opening ceremony that we normally have at the library. Uh, we're getting that together for the 15th of the month. And that's inviting the children to come out and uh, have authors read to them about some of the... Which library, by the way? It's going to be at the North End Library. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the 15th of the month. So that, that's school children coming during the day. They get read to by authors, you know, some of the black history and uh, so on. And then we have little um, activities for them to be a part of that. And then later that night, we usually invite the mayor and some of the sponsors that sponsor the Nanaimo African Area Society to come out and just have a little social, um, just uh, uh, and they learn about what's going on. And then we're gonna wrap it up this year on the 24th of February, we're gonna have our gala dinner. Okay, that's a Saturday. Anyway. That's a Saturday night. So we're having a whole bunch of young entertainers. There'll be some disco come out and, uh, you know, get your groove on, have some dance and some food. <laughs> and learn more about you know, what black history is all about and what we're doing. Um, and that's gonna be a wrap up for us this year. 
I'm not sure I can move as well as I used to. Oh, yeah, but, come you know, out. We'll, give you some, give, we'll, we'll, some, we'll give you some pointers there. I, I was going to say, because the Nanaimo African Heritage Society has been around for a while. Oh, my God. I, we're almost 20 years. It's 19 years now. 19 years. I wow. can't believe it. That just means that I'm getting older yeah. or younger. I don't well, want to look at it. <laughs> age, is, age is kind of relative about different things. But, yeah. but I really think that's... that's uh, that's important. I mean, your organization is important because it keeps, I think, a very valuable aspect of, of Canadiana, not just yeah. not just Nanaimo and you know uh, British Columbia, but the country. And um, it's important that people start because I think it'll start people maybe being more respectful towards one another. Well, and I, I hope so. And you know, I we come to this country. And I uh, was originally an American, and I, I've been living here for about 30 years. And you, you, you hit on something the, a few minutes ago when you said the adults need to get more into it. They do. Come out. Be a part of it. Teach your children about history. Let's learn about you if you're from Africa. Let's learn about you if you're from different parts of the world. If you happen to be black, it doesn't matter. You know, people come and say, oh, well, we are talking about this history. Well, we got to start somewhere. Let's talk about the land that we're living on, where we're living right now, and the contributions and how important that is. It's important for all of us to hear yeah. how the history played out. That's, that's a good point, and that's it's, it's actually a good place for us to end because this is we've sort of come to the end of our time. Oh my God, and, that was so and, fast! And I really appreciate you, <laughs> you know, taking the time to come out and thank and, you so and much for having me, Paul. Us. That's really hey, good. Thank you. you no, know, it's enjoyable, and and those. Those out there viewing us, if you have an idea that you would like to see on Coast Connections, drop us a line and let us know what it is. And I'm sure we'll be able to work out something and have your story told on Coast Connections.